Okay, Benjamin Payne. Hi. Uh, I'd like to thank Lorena for enabling us uh, to come to this event, for uh, the NSF for funding it, and for NVIDIA for hosting our uh, talks tonight. As she mentioned, my name is Ben Payne, and what I'm going to be talking about is transport of light and complex media. So the first idea I'd like to talk about is if you take a carrot and you soak it in a specially prepared dye, and then excite that soaked carrot, you can produce what's known as a random laser. So what's going on there is you excite some light inside the carrot, and because of the cellular structure, you're actually creating a laser cavity. So you can make a carrot into a laser. So this is the first idea. The second idea is that if you take light and you shine it on some tissue, like your skin, then you can actually uh, look at the reflection, and if you have some anomalous reflection, you can detect a tumor, because there's some unusual cellular structure uh, in the reflection. So the two, those two thoughts, you have a, a random carrot or a laser, and you have some cellular structure showing the tumor. The common theme here is that you have wave interference effects, and this is causing some unusual transport behavior due to the interference of the light. And so this is what I do. I develop a numerical model to see what happens when you have coherent interference of light. For example, uh, these blue points here are scatterers of light, and then I shine light from the left-hand side, and it propagates through this random scatterer medium, and I'm plotting in the yellow to red scale here the intensity of light. Uh, and so you get some very uh, detailed uh, behavior because this is at the size of a wavelength. And so the way that we do this is we take matrices which describe the light at each uh, interface between scatterers and free space, and we multiply all these together, and you can see what happens, what happens inside the medium. There's a little bit of numerical trickery that's uh, involved because you have to renormalize these matrices to have stability, but that's uh, neither here nor there for this conference. So the reason we want to do this is because, experimentally speaking, it's very difficult to have a knob that you can tune to adjust the amount of absorption or gain. Numerically, it's very easy. Uh, if you're doing it mathematically, you have a very hard time uh, dealing with thousands of scatterers. So if, if you have all these uh, numerical problems, you got to do it computationally, and that's what we're doing here. So this is a single uh, realization of a disordered waveguide, and we cannot just we don't have, we're not limited to just one waveguide. We can look at millions of waveguides, and so uh, the reason that is important is because we want to look at the statistical behavior of this light propagation. And so with that uh, model in mind, you might ask, well, what can you measure? And the answer is any metric. That that you can come up with that is mathematically well defined, we can measure in our system. So for example, the eigenvalues, the transforma uh, transfer matrices, anything that you can think of, we can do it computationally. So that's the strength of the model. This is a, a really simple example that if you send in different waveforms, like say a plane wave, where you excite the different channels of the waveguide in a different manner, you get different distributions of intensity inside the waveguide. This is maybe obvious, but how exactly that plays out is not not, uh, not straightforward. And so uh, the computational challenge here is that we have a large parameter space. We have to vary the geometry. We have to vary the amount of absorption we gain. And so there's uh, a lot of different uh, configurations to play with. And so we deal with this by using up to six, more than 16,000 CPUs in parallel. And we've used more than a million hours so far this year. To guide our work, we developed a phase space diagram. So on this axis, we have absorption and gain. And on this axis, we have disorder. The important thing out of this nice colorful picture here is that there are different regimes of transport. So you have diffusion, uh, localization, all these different regimes. This is going to guide our work uh, that was for my PhD. So we're going to look at those different transitions between regimes by using what's called the position-dependent diffusion coefficient. In contrast to classical diffusion, where you have a diffusion going on inside the waveguide, uh, this is a position-dependent version because you have coherent interference. And so that's relevant because you can measure the intensity inside the waveguide. W and J is the flux. And these vary as a, as, a, as a function of absorption. So you're increasing more absorption, it's canceling out the wave coherence. And so that makes this uh, position dependent diffusion coefficient. So we're going to use that to uh, measure those, trans those uh, different regimes of transport. So this 
position impedance diffusion coefficient changes as a function of absorption because you have more absorption canceling out the interference effects. And so that's why this is a uh, position dependent. And then the main result that we get is very good agreement uh, with our theoretical prediction. So here's our prediction. We did this and then we developed a numerical model, tested it out, and verified it. These are the regime boundaries here overlaid with our numerical results for a specific parameter. And so you can see very good uh, agreement between our prediction and numerical model. So that's our, our main result. The reason uh, this is important is because it shows we made a prediction and then we tested it numerically and it worked out very well. So we're, we're very happy. This is useful to other people because you can use our numerical model to uh, guide our experiments. So if we're collaborating with people at Yale, we can help them develop uh, what they should be investigating for actual experiments. And then also we've had some collaborators in France that develop some systems that they're testing experimentally and we can tell them what's going on in their experiment. They might not be able to see uh, exactly what's going on, but they have some results, and we can take and fit that. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to show next here, is they uh, developed a, a system with a bunch of random scatters. They sent in light, and then they got back uh, the intensity. And by comparing that with their numerical model, we could actually fit that very well and, and, and see how it compares. The last idea I want to leave you with is that you're not restricted to just random scattering, like the random carrot uh, example and the, the tumor. You can actually design novel behavior. So here, instead of a random system, you can make a pattern that's called aperiodic. It's not periodic, it's not random, and you get some very unusual behavior there. So this is kind of the future of where I want to go with uh, this work. Thank you.